Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode, I'm going to continue with launching the Dres Colony deployments. This is Dres Colony Deployment 3. Looks a lot like Dres Colony Deployment 1 and 2, because same sort of architecture, except this time it's a power distribution unit. In other words, a nuclear reactor. And so we've got enriched uranium that will be converted to depleted uranium. It's got a trivial amount of food, water, and oxygen. There is an additional life support container up there, just like on the previous launches. But really, um, even if we get the three colony modules to the surface of Dres safely, which I expect that we will do, uh, there will be some, uh, some work to be done to actually get the colony set up properly and get it the resources it needs. But at least we'll have the infrastructure in place. So that's the idea. It's been a long time since I've done this. I mean, basically, this is the same idea as what we did on the moon. But I, I don't remember all the details, and I haven't had experience trying to do this on Drez either. So, yeah, hopefully, because I'm not, you know, switching versions in between building this particular base, uh, it'll remain stable. I think the KAS problem was mainly introduced because I was switching versions from 0.24 to 0.90 but maybe it's just intrinsically bad to have the base connected up with these uh, KAS ports. Yeah, I think these are KAS um, compatible ports that are part of the colonization uh, bundle of mods. So yeah, we will see how that goes. But let's get this underway, and then we're going to have to do the transfers to Dres for all three deployments. And then I think I've got a jewel probe, uh, a probe around one of the moons of Jewel that needs to return to Kerbin. All right, let's bring this out. It is launching on the normal Strider, and we've seen these launches in the previous episode. So yeah, it should work out just fine. All right, here we go. The normal Dres Oasis water warning there, but just taking a look, I think it's just because of the really high capacity on the Dres Oasis for water, and indeed it's got 290 days worth. Yeah, alright. So, throttle is up, SAS is on. Alright, launch. There we go. So lately I've been working on an install that has both realism overhaul and colonization, the colonization mods so I can do colonization in the real solar system. The downside to that is that everything takes a lot longer in real time to do. So I'm of two minds about whether to do that or not. The plus side to that is of course it's you know got tremendous scale and significance since that has to be in a 64-bit version of KSP, and I'm using the 64-bit hack, and ironically that makes that much more stable than this install, even though it's got a lot more mods involved. At least uh, at the beginning. What happens when there are a lot of a lot of craft in orbit and active? Like here, we have 71 different active flights. Though some of them. Some of them are flagged, so they don't really count. But uh, some of them are pretty significant, so... So yeah, what happens when an install gets as long in the tooth as this one has been? I do not know. Might get very unstable. So, in recent space news, the ExoMars mission is underway, launched by a proton rocket successfully. And so it's going to be headed over to Mars to detect various uh, traces of methane and other things but methane is probably the thing that we're most interested in so basically it's an ore detector I mean uh, in a way in the most functional way except in this case methane is also linked to the existence of life in those locations I guess I'll hold it at 60 for now but methane is of course also usable as a fuel and if we can find uh, plenty of methane, that would be really helpful for future missions. I don't know if we'll find plenty. Water would suffice.
Okay. Those are off. Everything is looking good. Very stable. Okay, we've got a lot to burn yet. I've flattened out, but we're only at about a thousand meters per second, approaching a thousand one hundred. Still got a thousand one hundred left in this stage, but our apoapsis is now in space. Okay, set, and ignition of the little skipper. And we can probably get rid of the fairings now. Indeed. All is well. Let's coast to Apoapsis at this point. 108 kilometers is just fine. Systems seem nominal. We have plenty of electric charge. We've got RTGs on the orange. So after this, we'll have three oranges in orbit around Drez. That might be a bit of overkill, but it'll probably also be handy. Maybe. We got by with one in orbit around the moon. Well, well, at least one at a time. We actually had three iterations. There was the original orange, and then a sort of super orange, and then the pumpkin. The first orange crashed on the moon because it didn't have enough fuel to actually get back to orbit. Since we're on this one, I guess I'll plot the transfer to Dres for this one first. And then we'll take care of the other two. After all, every time I jump between ships, there's a chance that the game will crash. crash so, best to just stick with one for now. Okay, that should be fine. About 115 by 86. Alright, let me do some plotting. Okay, this looks like a reasonable pass. Our first burn will be 1,533 meters per second, and then the correction will be 368. Taking a look at how much it'll take to get into orbit, we can't add a maneuver to do that. So, let's forget about that, and let's not try and make this buggier than it really needs to be. That's the look of the approach, so we'll be swinging back in. Looks like we have to delay ourselves by quite a lot. We can't uh, hit it right here because Drez is too far behind, so not the best transfer time, apparently. But I guess I'll take it. Again, that's because Drez's orbit isn't circular, but alarm clock is pretending that it is, apparently. Okay, so node... Burn is in four minutes to burn 1500 meters per second. We'll take this three minutes and uh, probably a little bit of that. So let's say five minutes altogether so we can get closer. All right, let's get started. All right, we are now on escape and waiting for this stage to run out. We did start burning a little bit early, it looks like. The uh, thrust weight ratio of this particular stage was better than I had estimated. Hopefully that won't throw us off too much. Alright, separation. And ignition. Then again, this one might take a while. Maybe that'll make up for it. We are now approaching the close of the trans Trez interplanetary injection, if that's what you can call it. Let's take a look at how things are shaping up. Obviously, it won't be entirely clear until the mid course adjustment, which I will have to replot soon. But let's try and match the apoapsis. Hopefully that'll give us our best chance. Okay, well, that should be close enough. So we're sort of matching the arc up till that point. And then the green line goes further out. But that's because of the extra energy that we put into the orbit at the mid-course correction. So maybe if we can take a look like that and it looks a lot closer when you look from that angle than from this angle here looks like we're missing the target but 
Anyway, so that's fine. Okay, that should do the trick. Uh, about 63 kilometers, just a little bit more on the mid-course adjustment. And I think we can make that alarm for that correction. And we can move on to the next vehicle. So that's in 94 days. All right, let me take a look at the next transmission. All right, so I've got the same basic sort of deal plotted for this Duna, not Duna, Trez Colony Deployment 2, which is the Kerbitat. And so the same basic transfer route and then the make course adjustment. And here we are turning, and then the skipper will start things off. Actually, the skipper has quite a bit more resources for this one than for the previous one. So apparently I did the launch for this one a little bit better. We're now on escape, and this burn is proceeding pretty much exactly the way the last one did, except we'll be on this stage for a little bit longer. We have now hit the maneuver node, and we probably don't have too much longer to burn considering most of the remaining Delta V will be taken care of by this stage. Skipper stage out, set, and ignition. Ignition of the LVT-95-8. dash Liquid fuel engine assembly. Didn't really do a good job of integrating the engine into the into the fuel tank. I imagine I probably wanted to tuck that into the fuel tank a little bit. It might have popped out after I loaded up the craft file. Alright, here we go, getting close to the end of it. And again, I want to just match the target apoapsis. Okay, this one is on its way. And I'll need to do some touch up as usual. Alright, 420 kilometers it looks like for this one. 359 meters per second will be the mid-course adjustment. And I'm going to add that into the clock. Uh, it's, a, it's an okay gap between the two. Alright, let's get on with the Drez Colony Deployment 1. I also want to send a supply mission of some sort, I think. So let me get that together and launch it as well. Then we can proceed away from the Kerbin to Drez transfer window and go on to this dual to Kerbin transfer window to bring back that probe. Alright, here we go with Drez colony deployment number one, which is actually the colony control center. And I've got applied for the same sort of deal as the other ones. And throttle up. Drez transfer is now underway. Thinking about it a little bit, I think for the supply mission, maybe I'll have something that can go back and forth between Kerbin and Drez, instead of something that we'll have to launch again and again. So it'll bring the supplies over to Drez and then get into orbit around Drez, and then come back over to Kerbin, get refueled and resupplied from Kerbin. It'll of course be in Kerbin orbit and then it'll head back over to Drez after that. Sounds like something for a nuclear engine, right? Yep. So that's that's a thought. I think that'll make it a little bit interesting. And reusability is good in general. Especially when you're using expensive engines. Alright, getting ready for staging here. We are on escape. And the skipper is about to go out. There we go, staging. And now the LVT-95-8. sixty kilonewtons and a hefty 395 seconds of ISB. Of course, this is in 0 .90 uh, before everything got rebalanced in terms of ISB. So that's not unreasonable. Of course, 395 in 1.0 would be way, way off from all the other engines, but here in 0 .90 it's it's quite normal. Well, it's not that normal, but it's at least reasonable. Okay, getting close, preparing for engine shutdown. And that's it. Alright, that burn done, and as usual I'll fix the mid-course adjustment. 
All right, there we go, 42 kilometers. Probably we'll want more inclination than that. We don't really have the location of the water here. I guess I can see it. Dres... No, apparently I can't. Well, oh, I, I'm still thinking of uh, of 1.0 resource system. Um, scan sat, big map. This Kerbin, no. Well, we'll sort that out once we get there, I suppose. There's a lot of patches of water, so it's not too bad. There'll be a lot of places that we can potentially land. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you can see all of this area has some water, at least. Okay. Alright, so let me put together a supply mission so that we can refuel the Drez Oasis and it can refuel its drilling miner and thereby get some more water. Also, we'll send some water to it. Okay, so this is ready and we'll add its alarm. Okay, so here is the Drez resupply cycler. It's not a proper cycler in that it's getting into orbits around both Drez and Kerbin, but it is going back and forth. I put these tanks uh, tucked in in a semi cheaty way and hopefully that won't explode, but we'll have to see. But basically, this top tank is locked and has the fuel that will be transferred to the Drez Oasis. The fuel down here is the fuel to get over to Drez and the uh, fuel in these radial tanks is locked and that's the fuel for the return to Kerbin. That's the idea anyway. I'm not entirely sure how much fuel I need for the return to Kerbin. Uh, I haven't come back from Kerbin from Drez very often and also there's the matter of getting into orbit around Kerbin and I don't know I don't think this is gonna be able to air brake very well so we'll probably have to use some fuel for that. So that's another wild card. But otherwise, it's very simple. Uh, four tanks of food, water, and oxygen. And we will be transferring fuel, hopefully. Uh, though we will tap this fuel if necessary, if I think that that's necessary. RCS, obviously, probe core, and docking port. And solar panels on the bottom. And the nuke, obviously. And of course, in this version, the nuke uses both liquid fuel and oxidizer. So we have both. Okay, now the downside to this is obviously the ridiculously long burn times. Uh, even though that tank and those radial tanks are locked, uh, 27 minutes and 49 seconds on this tank here. So I'll just have to deal with that with perhaps some physical time warp and maybe a book to read. Okay, it is launching on the Strider Light, and so it's, you know, fairly cheap. Let's get it into the fairing and get it on its way. All right, here we go, throttle up, SAS on. Dreads Oasis water running out, but this time we will be trying to solve that problem. Okay, here we go. Okay, we are well past the speed of sound. Probably going through max Q right about now. Everything is looking fine, no jitters. Overheating on the mainsail is under control. Alright, getting ready for booster set. Booster separation. And there they go. With hopefully an eventual recovery using stage recovery. We have plenty of Delta V to spare. I could have made the payload heavier with more fuel, but um, there would be a longer burn time, and so I decided that enough was enough. There's a limit to how long I can sit around waiting for these things to happen. Alright, let me just have it coast a bit and drop the fairings. Alright, everything's unpacked. We might as well get the solar panels out. Check that they are all right. Okay. Hopefully that'll be enough solar panel re. I expect so. Yeah, yeah, it'll be plenty. 
Okay, here we go, and that's enough. Okay, 113 by 87, and let me plot for Drez. It'll probably look like a very similar transfer to what we've seen before, though. With the nuclear stage, it's a bit more complicated because it's got that long burn time. So there's bound to be more inaccuracies. We'll have to do more adjustments. We've got 750 meters per second here. It's possible that we could burn this out and then do a couple of burns. No, we won't be able to do a couple of burns with the nuclear engine. Uh, once you get uh, 300 more than this stage will provide, we're, we're already on escape. So, yeah, we can't really do too much like that. All right, let me take a look at the situation. Okay, we have an initial hit. It was pretty easy to do since I've done it a few times before already. But we probably won't get quite this approach because of the long burn time of the nuke. In fact, uh, the note is in two minutes. We should probably get started now. This will give us a nice kick. About half of the burn will be done by the mainsail. Well ahead of the node. Okay, set. And now the nuke. Ah, uh, yes. 10 minute burn according to this. Probably not too far off since the, since the thrust to weight ratio doesn't increase that much during the burn. Yeah. Current acceleration a whopping 1.389 meters per second squared. It's about 0.14 G's. Okay, I think I let things get a little bit too far here. Hold on. Uh, I was going by this, and that's apparently not a good idea. Okay, uh, let's go retrograde here. Yeah, hmm. I do need to watch out for that. Kinda wish now that I waited until the other missions were in Kerbal SOI, out of Kerbin's SOI. Because then I'd be able to see exactly where they ended up and match that. Right now I'm just gonna have to guess and then do the mid-course plane change, plot that to get as close as possible. It seems like my estimates for how much fuel I should reserve were pretty bad. Of course, I overburned, and now I have to correct that. And that probably costs about 600 meters per second altogether. But I might have to tap some of the fuel that I was planning to transfer in order to in order to really get there. After all, I'll have to get into orbit around Drez. I think I remember it being about 40 million kilometers. Let me hold it right there and try and plot the mid-course adjustment. Okay, looks like I had a good estimate there because the mid-course correction will cost about the same as it did for the other missions. And it was pretty easy to plot. So, yep, we'll hit it right there. 213 days, which should be well before the Dres Oasis actually runs out of anything. Yep, 254 days on the oxygen there. Alright, and this should be carrying about 700 days worth of supplies for it, for four crew. Alright, so that is settled. Though I'm not going to be transferring as much fuel as I would have wanted to. Alright, so that gets us to the point where I can check up on that that probe around Jewel and get it transferred back over to Kerbin. Let's take a look at that. Okay, here is our little BOP probe in orbit around BOP. It's got 2,358 meters per second and I am going to attempt to plot for its route back home. That should be enough Delta V to get it back to Kerbin. It's got heat shield and the Science Junior is ready to be recovered so let's try and get it. Okay it looks like we have a case of fortuitous timing. Jewel is right at the ascending node to Kerbin 
And so we can meet Kerbin on the descending node. And that is convenient, so we, we can avoid any, any uh, mid-course corrections to our inclination. And we are fairly inclined once we exit, exit the sphere influence of Bop, because Bop is pretty inclined too. Yeah, we have some residual inclination, it looks like, which is interesting. Yep, so, well, that's not going to be a problem in this case, because we'll just hit Kerbin right there. Now, I haven't plotted it so that we have a low Kerbin periapsis. We will need one of those. But for now, I need to get out of the sphere of influence of BOP, and that's an 85.78 meter per second burn, according to this. So this says 85.6. Interesting. All right, let's do that. Either way, it's looking like we've definitely got enough fuel. No big problems there. Okay, that's pretty much on the button. 1,200 now. And that will be over there. And that's convenient because right over there, it's in six days. You see the jewel to the carbon transfer is in eight days, so... The fact that we're taking so long to get there is just fine. Suits our purposes precisely. Well, not precisely. Uh, off by two days, but it's close enough. Takes a long time to get out of Bob's sewer influence. Okay, let's take a look. We don't really have an encounter right now. Doing the burn at Bob and getting out of... Bob's sphere of influence has apparently changed things a bit. Well, now I can angle for a better approach, which is what I'm doing here. Changing the time first. Timing of our burn will be important. Okay, that's looking better. Oops. Hmm. Seems like it might be a little bit hard to get too much closer than this. Let's see. As usual, if I really want to get it that close, I'm going to have to be hitting it like to the hundredth of a second and hundredth of a meter per second delta V. So it's probably not going to look like that at the end. All right, let's get close to the node and try our best though. Okay, let's go. So, potential recovery of a probe from BOP. I don't remember if I've ever done that before. It's possible that it's been a while, if I have. Alrighty, getting close to the end of this. Let me just try and hit the number first and then make corrections. Uh, it's wandering away a bit. Okay, well that was the number. Let's see what it did. Um, not bad. Pretty close. Looks like... We can get it like that. Once we get uh, into Kerbin SOI, we should be able to get into the atmosphere without any trouble. We've got 1,000 meters per second here. Okay. So, let's add... Well, I guess we'll follow it out of the SOI. That way we'll get the SOI change into Kerbin rather than this SOI change, which is out of Joule. Is it really that, that quickly out of Joule? 15 days only. Normally it takes a lot longer. Well, let me put that uh, that there and let's follow it out. Yeah, it's probably because it was already in the orbit of BOP, which is pretty close to being out of Jules SOI anyway. Okay, just waiting for escape. Alright, there we go. And it is our intended periapsis at Kerbin, so that's good. We'll add that alarm. All right, and that will do it for me in this episode. So, 
uh, we got three, well, four things over to Drez Transfer, and we are bringing one Bop Pro back. All right, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.